This is a tutorial on how to tie the why the mayfly's green caddisfly larvae. As you can see here, this is the pattern. And this pattern imitates the green caddisfly, um, which uh, if you um, look, uh, it's pretty common in a lot of cold water streams, especially here um, where uh, around this area where I fish in Virginia. They're very common. Um, uh, and this is tied on a size 16. Um, I'll go through the materials that I use fairly quickly. Um, uh, the hook that I use is a multi-use curved hook from Jay Stockard. And I'm not affiliated with the company. They're an online um, fly shop type of company. Um, but I really like their multi-use curved hooks and they're fairly affordable. So that's the, I'm going to tie this pattern on a size 16 curved hook. Um, it adds a little character to the fly. You can also tie this pattern on a scud, a scud type of hook. Um, and for the weight, um, you can use a bead head that uh, you can easily add a bead head and it doesn't change the pattern all that much. If you like to, to fish your flies with a little bit extra weight, um, feel free to add that. Um, but I'm just going to tie this pattern with a little bit of a little bit of this lead wire in 0 0.01 size, um, just to give it a little bit extra weight. Uh, I'll turn the fly a little bit. You can see the flashback that I like to add to this pattern, and the material that I use for the flashback is this pearl tinsel, which is a really nice material. I like to I really like to add a flashback to a lot of my patterns. Um, and in, in the size, on the style hook, size 16, size 18, um, size 14, maybe even size 20, this pearl tinsel is really good to add that flashback. And it's really simple to, to add as well. The thread I use this Danville, um, Danville's Light Brown. Um, this is a, a 70 denier um, thread, a fairly thin thread. Um, it doesn't matter really too much what type, uh, for this size and this style hook, it doesn't matter too much uh, what size and um, color your thread is. Use what you have. Um, it is uh, probably more ideal to, to um, tie it in a, in a color that matches the, the color of the fly, as well as maybe a, a little bit thinner thread, but um, what you got is what you should use. Um, you can see the rib that I also added and that um, not only adds a little bit extra flash but it also gives the body, the abdomen of this fly a little bit of, extra, of that ribbed look, segmented look and a lot of the, um, the green caddis flies do have a segmented body like, um, a segmented like body and that just adds to um, the look of this pattern. Uh, and for that I use this ultra wire gold uh, this gold ultra wire, um, which I use for the rib, and for the dubbing, I use um, uh, I usually use a green caddis color dubbing. You can see this the green for the for the abdomen of this fly. I usually use a green caddis. However, I don't have that at the moment, um, and so that is the lesson uh, that if you don't have an exact material that a pattern calls for. You shouldn't just give up and say, well, I don't have that, I don't have that material, I, I can't tie this pattern. You should try to innovate a little bit, try to come up with your own style, um, uh, which may end up working better than what the pattern, what the you know standard pattern calls for. And so I didn't have any green caddis um, uh, dubbing and so I looked in my fly kit or my fly tying box and I saw this olive hairs mask and it's uh, uh, it's got a wide variety of different um, uh, fiber lengths and so it's really buggy and it's that it's got that green color and so that's what I use for this um, this this pattern uh, for the abdomen you can see the green color there and for the head or for the thorax uh, you can see it's a darker brown, and again, I don't have a darker, a dark brown dubbing at the moment. My tying box obviously 
um, has some weaknesses. Um, I looked around and I saw that I had a natural color um, Harris mask, which again, this these two are ones that I showed in my Gold Road Hairs Ear tutorial. Um, and I also had this black rabbit strips, cross cut rabbit strips, which I, I, I've used sometimes for streamer patterns and it's just rabbit's fur. I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be exclusively used for streamer patterns or whatever else. And so I cut a little bit off of this and I'll cut off, I'll get a bit of a clump of this natural hair's, um, hair's fur and I'll combine the two to make a kind of a darker brown with again a wide variety of these fiber links to make it look really buggy as you can see um, in this pattern and so that's what I use for the dubbing and again I and as always I finish off the pattern um, with my with this hard as hull um, head cement and again um, critical materials of course you have you need your vise and you need your scissors and you need your finishing tool and that is the materials that I use to tie this pattern. The Why the Mayflies a Green Caddis Larvae pattern. And I'll go through how to tie this pattern next. Okay, so the first step that I do, as always, is to debar my hook um, just by clamping it in between there and pinching down that barb. And you don't have to do this. This is just a personal preference. I always mention that at the start of my videos um, that I like to do that. Um, and then you want to start your thread at the front there, like so. Bring that back about to where that bends, just about that point. It's usually about halfway between that the point of that hook and the and the and the edge of that bend right there, right in between those two points. That's usually the mark. And so the first thing we're going to do is add a little bit of weight to this fly. And so I'll pinch off a little a little strip of this lead wire, and you can change um, how much of this you add based on how much weight you'd like. Uh, I'm going to tie this in, I'm going to tie this one pretty heavy. So I'm going to add a decent amount of this lead weight. You can just wiggle that to break off the pieces. Sometimes it doesn't break off um, all the way. You just try again, you'll get it. And I like to add a dab of head cement, right like that, just to get everything make sure everything is secured on that hook shank and then you can bring your thread and secure that down pretty well with some tight wraps like so and maybe build up a little bit of taper at the base of that lead wire like so and bring it back down to the back there and at this point we're going to tie in our flashback and our gold rib and so i'm going to take this pearl tensile we got our pearl tensile and just cut a piece off just cut a piece like so and we want to make sure that this is tied in on the top, very top of the shank of the hook so that we can pull it over over top of the other material. We, so we want to make sure that it's tied in and lays down right on top. So it lays just straight on top there. And sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, tricky to get to get it to lay down, but um, um, if you play with it a little bit, you'll be able to get it. And now that we have the tinsel tied in, we'll take our gold wire, our ultra wire in gold, like so. We'll cut off a piece of this. If I can find the end, that's always the that's always the challenge for these 
um, spooled wires. And we want to tie this in at the at the side of the fly, at the side of the hook shank, and make a couple tight wraps and then wrap it all the way up. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about building up too much bulk because um, you can really adjust the the amount of bulk of the of the dubbing when you use when we're adding the dubbing. Um, so this is a fairly easy pattern to tie in that respect, and that you don't have to worry about about bulking up too much. And so the next step is to add our is to create our um, create our body or our abdomen and again we're using this olive uh, hairs mask and you can use you know you can uh, experiment a little bit with this what materials you use what colors you use it doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be green um, there are many brown bodied caddis flies out there in fact the majority of caddis flies aren't green and so um, a, a brown caddis fly larvae is perfectly um, acceptable and I'm sure you'll catch fish with a brown bodied caddis fly larvae um, but this one we're tying in, in a caddis green or we're tying in, in green and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a cut um, uh, let's see I'm gonna probably make a cut uh, up here um, it doesn't matter too much. That's just where I'm going to be um, cutting my my fur from. And I'll make a couple cuts. And so I have this green um, green fur. And um, what you want to do to kind of to get all those fibers mixed together is to grab it with two fingers and one hand, and pretty tightly and pull those fibers apart with the other hand like so and what that does is it mixes all those fibers together it, it makes the long fibers and the and the short fibers kind of consolidate and it'll get you a nice consistent dubbing um, as you can see that's pretty consistent and a dark green olive green color and you can put that right up next to your next to your thread and roll with your fingers again you want to roll in one direction don't don't change directions mid midway that'll screw you up and once you have it rolled on there you can use the side of your finger just to slide that right up there and we're going to start building our caddis fly body and you can be pretty thick with this because the gold rib and the flashback will will um, slim it down quite a bit and so you can make your bo the, the, the body of this caddis fly with your dubbing pretty thick and if you get too thick if you have a section you don't like you can you can unwind you can rewind and try again it's not set in stone once you wrap it you can go back and as you go you can re-roll it However you need to do it and we're gonna go up a little bit past halfway on the shank of this hook I'm gonna get a little bit of extra um, of this rabbit's fur um, and again I'll consolidate a little bit before I put it on the thread and I'll go ahead and add that like so slide that up to the tip there and we want to go, like I said, a little bit more than halfway on the along the shank of this hook. And on these last wraps, you can pull back those fibers like so. And we're gonna go, we're gonna go a little bit further. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of trial and error to get the amount of dubbing you need right. Some, I mean, even if you tie 100 of these flies, you still sometimes need to go back and add a little bit more or you grab a little bit too much, you know. Um, so we're going to add a little bit more. And we're going to keep building that taper, tapered body up. And that's about where we're going to stop. So I'm just going to pull the extra off.
go back of uh, a wrap and re-roll it, re-wrap it once or twice there, and then get a thread right there. And then you can see we have a tapered body and that dubbing, uh, all those fibers are sticking out, makes it really buggy looking. And so at this point, we're going to bring our flashback over top, which is as simple as pulling that fiber or pulling that flashback or that tinsel over top of the dubbing using your other hand to do a overhand wrap like so. And that'll secure that flashback right on top there. And you can pull it tight and secure it down. As easy as that. And now you can see you've got that flashback sitting on top of that dubbing. And we want to use our gold rib to, you can twist it either way. Um, you're not securing, you know, you don't have any fibers that'll break. And so you can, you can wrap it either way, whichever you like to. Um, and we're going to just wrap that up like so and bring it up to the where your thread is do an overhand wrap and now that that's secure we'll do a couple tight wraps like that and we can go ahead and trim our gold wire don't trim the flashback don't trim the flashback that's an important part um, of course you can if you do trip uh, trim the flashback or the tinsel um, you can just add more, but that just adds an extra step to this pattern. If you don't trim it and just trim the gold wire, make sure the gold wire is secured down. You don't have anything sticking out or anything. And then you want to tie back your tinsel. You want to, um, you know, it was sticking out the front like this. You want to pull it back, straight back over, pretty much over top of what you just pulled the tinsel that you pulled over and then rewrap your thread so that it's where your abdomen stopped so where that dubbing stopped you want to pull your thread back and so that you have that tinsel right there tied in where that abdomen stopped and um, that's an important step because we're going to be pulling it over top of the the thorax of this pattern and so at this point, we're going to be tying in and getting our dubbing ready for the thorax of this pattern. And again, I'm using this natural um, Harris mask as well as a little bit of this black um, Harris fur, which is a crosscut, um, just a, cro a strip of crosscut. And so I'm just going to cut a little bit of this black, a piece of this black, if it cooperates, if it lets me do it. Um, So I've got a I've got a, a clump of this black crosscut, and then I'm going to cut a little bit of this neutral brown um, neutral brown hair's mask. I'm going to cut a, a clump right here. I've got dull scissors, I know. Um, so you have your clump of neutral color hair's mask and your clump of black, and you can just put them together. And the same method that we used before, you know, grabbing the one um, side with two fingers pretty firmly and then pulling them away with the other two fingers. Um, this is a good way to mix different dubbings together, especially hair's fur. It, it uh, tends to um, mix pretty well using this, this method. And so we'll just kind of keep doing that. It'll keep mixing the the color colored fibers together, and and the, the end result is we want a dark brown um, dubbing with a variety of different fiber lengths to make it look really buggy. And there we go. We have a dark brown. Uh, it's really just rabbit's fur. Uh, um, a, a dark brown rabbit's fur dubbing. And we'll go ahead and add that. We'll go ahead and add that to the thread. And if you have a dark brown rabbit's mask or you have dark brown rabbit's 
dubbing, you can, of course, um, use that. Um, it'll skip the step of consolidating the two. And so we're going to just start building the thorax here. Um, fairly thick at this point. You want to taper down from thick at the at where the abdomen ended and thinner where the um, head will be, the end of the fly. And sometimes you just gotta be patient with this dubbing. It can sometimes be stubborn and doesn't stick to the thread all that well, but um, we're fly fishermen after all. We we know what patience is like. We know how to do that. And so we just build that. We build that head down to taper and if we screw up we can go back of course like that and we can build it just build it up it doesn't have to be perfect and that's kind of what we're shooting for real buggy and you can see it's thicker at this point and thinner down at the front and we want to pull our flashback over top of the dubbing that we just added we just do a loop uh, overhand wrap like so and secure it down with a couple tight wraps at the front there and then we can trim this up just clip it And at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of head cement and finishing this fly off. Um, you can build the head a little bit with your with your thread if you'd like to, like that. And I'm gonna pull some of these fibers. It does make a little bit of a mess working with this hair's mask, but that's okay. We're gonna put a little head cement on the thread. If you get a little bit too much, that's okay. You can. Pull it off with your fingers, and we're going to finish this fly off with a couple wraps of the, with the finishing tool. And I'll do a couple more wraps. To build that head up a little bit. There we go. Pull it tight. And trim it up. And you can use your scissors. At this point, the, the pattern is done. But you can use your scissors to, you know, trim. If you have some fibers that you that are too much, that are, you know, hanging off there too crazily, you can use your scissors and trim and trim things up, make them look a little bit more streamlined it's really up to you you can make this as whatever you'd like to look how buggy it looks you know that's that's your preference there's so many fibers in there you can you can pull if you screw something up you can pull some more out um, and then you can trim them down to how you like but that is the size 16 uh, why the mayflies caddis green caddis larvae um, on the on the on the curved hook. Uh, that is a pattern that I've come up with to imitate uh, green caddis larvae here in the cold water streams of Virginia. And um, just a uh, a little bit of lesson as um, uh, as to how uh, to use your imagination as far as the materials um, that patterns required require um, you know use your imagination um, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as how everyone else is, else ties it and um, and so I hope you enjoy this video um, stay tuned for some more that I'll put out uh, and uh, thank you for watching till next time